All right, 701, time to call this meeting to order. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Mr. Sherman, since you made us late, would you like to say the prayer tonight? Lord, give us the strength to make the correct decisions for the city, keep everybody safe, protect us from the coronavirus, and just give us the good decision powers that we need. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Call the Mr. Smith? Here. Taylor? Here. Mr. Sherman? Here. Mr. Dempsey? Here. Mr. Hamp? Here. 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 All right. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the last regular meeting? Uh oh, Facebook is crashing. That's what ever loaded the system. All Tony fans. <laughs> All hands. Let me hang it. Let me let me let me uh, blind them. <laughs> <laughs> How was it last week? Great. Okay, let's go home. From everything I can see, it's operating correctly in Facebook, just not on our screen. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look for a new okay. IT person. Okay, yeah, it's on. Okay. All right, so um, has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes from last regular meeting? Motion to approve. I'll second that. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Cassie? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith? I wasn't here, but I did watch the meeting, so yes. Yeah. All right, do we have any citizens' comments out there? Nothing yet. Okay. All right. Can they hear us okay? Yeah. Oh, so there's someone that says they can, we can see you and hear you. That's uh, Sarge. Sarge. Okay. Sarge gave us proper sound check. All right. So business and organizational comments? Anything? All right. Any committee discussions or meetings? Uh, we had a finance committee meeting on the Facebook page if anybody wants to see it. All right. Thank you, Carl. All right. Code enforcement update. <laughs> Good evening, citizens, council. October through November, there were 16 warnings issued. Two citations were given. Um, out of our vacant properties, the list went up a few. We've got 98 residential and eight commercial now. I didn't do the total right. So a total of 106. Um, next page. These are some houses that um, are new to our list for November. Um, some of which have been vacant for quite some time that the code office is working on, uh, looking at the history to see what's going on with the history of the building, checking out the taxes, um, seeing if there's any foreclosures, just doing the research. So we've got a couple houses, um, three houses in the process. The next one, I'd like to talk about nuisance blight and uh, drug related drop off locations. So if you're a citizen in the city and you're aware of a, of a vacant vehicle that has been left, um, most of the time, the windows are busted out of them, and we have been doing some research and have realized that these are drop locations for drugs. 
So the quicker I can respond to these vehicles, the quicker we can get those removed out of the city. I currently have about six people that I've issued citations to to appear in mayor's court. And we're also working in mayor's court to try to get these people to come in to remove those vehicles. Um, I've been talking to chief about individuals where these cars, the individuals have been cited in the mayor's court. They don't come in. They've been issued letters that they are in non-compliance um, with mayor's court. What's the next step we can do? Um, if towing's an option, if the, if the laws allow us to tow these vehicles, or, or we just need another option because there's been probably, I don't know, right around 15 cars that are still setting, that's been setting for six months that I've been working on and I can't get the property owners to remove those cars. Um, so it appears that our legislation currently is not allowing a quicker turnover rate which again allows individuals to drop drugs in the cars, do drugs and money exchanges. So um, we're working on that. Hopefully council, I'm asking that council maybe help uh, legislate some kind of laws on how we can get rid of some of these vehicles that's been setting for months when they won't appear in mayor's court. Um, I think we need to research it. It's a big, big issue in our town. It's not only a nuisance and blight, it's also taking up space in our alleys. It's taking up valuable parking spaces and people's on people's properties and then they're parking in the streets because they have these uh, abandoned cars sitting around in their lots. A lot of them, uh, the individuals are saying that it's been left there and I give them information on how to get rid of it. Um, but a lot of it is just people having abandoned cars in the alleyways hmm. and on their lot. So we need to look at that. That's that's a huge topic for the city. If, can I ask a question? If yeah. it's in an alleyway, wouldn't that be able to be towed by the oh. city because it's, it's in a public right of way? Well, it's not in the alley. It's, it's in the, the parking lot. Okay, it's, it's in, in their yard. Okay. They're, they parked it, as you can see here. Um, a couple of these are close to the alleyways, but they're still on the first private, private, private property. property. Mm -hmm. So we can't tell them what do we do. If we issue a citation in the court and they don't appear. Are there people living there? Um, so a couple places they are, uh, like the, the, the silver car and the center one, those are abandoned houses. No one's living there. Nobody well, living there. Huh? Something I used to do a long time ago was knock on the door and ask them if they would be willing to give it to the towing company to get rid of it. And that, that worked tremendously well back in the day. I mean, it just knock on the door and say, you got a abandoned car there. Uh, one of the towing companies would be glad to take it if you want to give, you know, if you want to let them do it and then try to get, try to secure their permission to do that. If there's somebody living there. And you could also add in that that saves, I used to add in that that saves you getting a ticket for having a car there. Or to get a so uh, on the van ones, I don't know what the answer is. It, 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 My first step is to knock on the door and talk to yeah. the citizens. Yeah, I always communicate with the citizens when I'm doing code enforcement. Um, a lot of times they give me excuses. Well, my husband, one in particular, my husband's a truck driver over the road. He'll be back in two weeks. We'll get tags for it or we'll sell it um, or we'll give it away to someone. And then it never happens. Well, There's a lot a of these towing companies will give them some money off for the car. It ain't a great amount. A lot, a lot of times you can get a couple hundred dollars for handling the car. So. We have an individual that yeah. has a limousine in his backyard. He's come yeah. into court. And he refuses to get rid of the limousine because it has special value to him. Okay. Memory. Um, I have a, a friend that's the city safety service director of Marietta. Um, his name's Steve Wetz. You know, you might think about, you know, Marietta, I'm sure, has that problem. I can reach out to him for you if you would, if okay. you want me to, and ask him what, how they deal with that down there. Because I'm sure, and you know, I'm sure that it's a problem everywhere. And, that's just nothing more than another eyesore. Yeah, we have an overabundance of vehicles parked in people's yards. And 
Um, I'm just receiving non-compliance vehicles, period. Um, Dan can tell you, I bring some of them to court and um, he sets before court and a lot of them just refuse to get rid of them. The where they say, huh? The one guy went from jail. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like they have the sentimental value to these cars, but I think well, that's some cases. Some cases is they're just not compliant, no matter what I what I say on. So I think the penalty needs to be stiffer, or we need to legislate something that legally we can legislate to rid these vehicles because they are. Um, there's there's a lot of them that are drug related drop offs. I condemned the house, and there was a vehicle in the in the yard. I pulled back the tarp and told PD to keep an eye on it. You know, I pulled back the tarp. I said, you see the tarp pulled back, somebody's probably sleeping in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I go up, we go up on a call because someone had broke into the, the vacant building and, and the tarp was pulled back over top of the car. So I pull it completely off so that at least when PD cruises the alleyway, they know if someone's staying in there or something's going on inside the car. And that happens a lot as well. There's people that are living in cars um, in the city. Um, I've had to pull extension cords out of houses and cars. Yeah, so I would I I thought about taking it to planning and see if planning can figure out what's going, you know, what what we can do, what other cities are doing. I know the I I've got some close ties with uh, the code office in Athens, and I do contact them, and they don't have the issue like this. If a as a matter of fact, a lot of the landlords just pull the cars off the off the lots and then the city throws them. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but that's what they have told me has happened in their city. But they don't have the overabundance of vacant houses and vacant vehicles in their in their town. Well, if it's a rental from that, you could do you could attach not having the the car there as part of the rental from that. I mean, if it's a rental, it makes it easier. If it's just somebody with a vacant property, that's like the answer is to get it to vacant property to the land bank and then let the land bank get rid of the cars, I guess. We've been we've been pretty successful on that, you know, getting the vacant property to the land bank. So, I think my, my yeah. biggest issue, sorry, Greg, my biggest issue is these cars sitting next to the alleyways, which are all these cars that have broken out windows that's creating crime. Uh, you know, kids are going by busting out the windows or whoever, and then there's been drug drop offs. And the neighbors are telling me, I know this car is getting drugs dropped off before dropping off stuff inside the car. And then they come, and then someone else comes by. I mean, I've been told that. They've seen it. The neighbors or the, the folks that live or, lives around this stuff sees it. And then it's, you know, it's a problem come wintertime as well when you're traveling the the uh the alleyways so just wanted to put that out there that we're working on that if anyone's got any ideas um the next one is rental registrations for 2021 we started sending out uh rental notifications in october this year hoping that um we will get more people to respond uh, before the deadline which is January 1st. Um, we've got 55 rental registrations that came into the office and we've collected $1,650. And so I'm just reminding everyone that are you know, property owners that rent their properties to get those sent in before uh, January 31st because May or uh, February 1st, there's a $100, $100 penalty per um, building. So it, it can get pretty steep uh, really fast. And then we'll go to the next one. So uh, grass mowing is over for the year. It expired December 31st. Now I, I just want to put out there that winter time is coming. We want to make sure that um, we clean and clear the complete sidewalk that um, is attached to the front or the sides or behind your house. Um, 12 hours after any snowfall and just remember to remove the ice um, so that we can keep our citizens safe, our mail ladies, our mailmen when they're uh, delivering mail. Let's try to keep the sidewalks clear of ice and snow. 
slide. Um, the next slide is condemned properties. So in 2020, we were able to secure um, 18 properties. And when I say secure for public safety and health hazards, we have about eight properties left uh, on my list to secure, board up, clean up. Um, this month, if anyone's interested, November 24th, November 23rd and 24th, it's the week in or the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to be working with the Athens County Prosecutor's Office and um, the city street department utilities department at 770 784 poplar we're going to clean up that property we have a guy that's coming in from athens that's going to take the bike parks because those individuals um had an overwhelming amount of bicycle parts and bicycles so um the land bank the the um treasurer for the for the county had called me and said he found a guy that actually rebuilt bikes and gives them away for free. So he's coming on the 23rd. Hawking College is bringing some folks over uh, for their criminal justice program and they're gonna be helping clean up as well. Uh, we're hoping to get the property completely cleaned up and everything hauled away. We're gonna recycle what we can recycle. And I secured a grant for a dumpster Yes, Dan. So the, the person that's coming up to get all the bike parts and rebuild bikes, is he going to set aside a day to tribute to some of the children in Nelsonville or are they staying at home? I, well, I think it's countywide. So even Nelsonville folks can go down and get a bike if they want one. Okay. They're free. Could you get us that information so we can? I sure will. I'll get, get it out to the public. Yeah, absolutely. I have a bicycle, thank you. Okay. Um, so you're in the there is, I don't know how the railroad tie or railroad track actually got on the property, but there's a big giant chunk of railroad track that we're going to try to relocate and get back to the railroad. I don't know how we're going to haul it over to them. There's a vacant vehicle. Um, I'd like to talk to Rick Wasserman to see if we can use that vehicle once they uh, take ownership of it so that the fire department and the police department can train on that vehicle. Um, they're probably, I'd say, two large roll, uh, well, probably one large roll off of nothing but trash at this place. So, um, if you're going to go to 20 to 30 tires. So it's going to be a joint effort between multiple departments to get 770 and 784 clean. Um, we'd like to take down some of the fencing um, that are, that's falling down. We just have a lot of plans on how we're going to clean it. But if anyone wants to volunteer, um, contact me. You can email me. You can call me. And uh, I'll set up a time in which you can come up and help. It's between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, by the 24th, that will be the property of the land bank. So, remind me, are they tearing these down or are they hoping to? No, save we, them? there's, so if you've ever been by 770 and 784 Poplar, there's a ton of trash. So, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up, take down the fence that's falling down, take out like there's a ton, there's probably 50 tires. We're going to put it up in our recycling. Um, we're going to recycle all the bike parts, um, take, try to take that big, huge railroad track back to the railroad, see if they want it, um, and then do something with the car. We're not tearing down the building. Okay. They don't have the funds. Uh, the land bank didn't have the funds. I think they're trying to either sell them to someone who will either rehab them or tear them down. Okay. So I'm just happy to be tough to rehab it. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to rehab it. But you might be able to sell the locks to somebody. I, I think they're not. 65 might be able to. I, I sent photos over to Rick and Rick's thinking the same way. Sure, like the, yeah, I the think foundations, they come down personally, but yeah. The foundations are pretty solid, but nothing else solid. Like, 
Yeah, I didn't look at the exciting one. 685 exciting one. Um, that's how they're breaking in. Yeah. If we have time on the 23rd and 24th, we're going to roll over down the alleyway, three houses down on Walnut. There's a house there that we cleaned up the beginning of summer. And if we have space in our uh, roll off, we're going to clean, we're going to try to clean some stuff out of that building and recycle as well. Um, so I was able to get a grant for $900 and I think it's $484 for recycling. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it guard dumpster. Help me out here. Who was it that I got the grant off of? It was the, uh, it was the, uh, it was the, uh, the talking solid waste district. Yes. Oh, Roger Bell. Yeah. Roger Bell. Roger Bell. So I just want to thank Roger. I want to thank all the people that's making this possible because we did it as a team. And if we didn't do, and you know, the, the, the police department was so great on being able to um, evacuate and secure the building as well. So, um, and I'm sure you guys are all aware that it was a well-known um, drug house, a lot of criminal activity going on in those two locations. Um, as a matter of fact, a couple years ago, they had some people at 784 making meth, um, and it, it had been condemned for quite some time. Steve Pearson condemned it, um, and then I finished boarding it up. Um, so it's just all good work that's, that's happening there on Poplar Street. And then we'll go to the next slide. Oh, thank you. So I just want to remind citizens that to help me, because um, I do a lot of jobs in the city, if you have a complaint, um, street, sewer, as long as it's non-emergency, please utilize the Text My Gov app. It's 740-265-3858. Uh, you can report an issue to the city 24-7. All you have to do is text hi to that number and it'll prompt you on what to do next. Um, it's leaf pickup. We're doing leaf pickup Tuesdays and Thursdays this month until the last week of the, or wait a minute here, till the week of Thanksgiving. So get, call in your address, call and get it done because there will not be an extension done for the leaf pickup. So if you have leaves, please call the city manager's office and we'll put you on the list so the street department can go out and pick up leaves. I think it's all. I have a question. Yes. Do you have any like um, update on how the shopping carts have gone since we passed that legislation? Um, shopping carts have ebbs and flows. There, I'll be out on the street and there's a ton of shopping carts and then Two weeks later, there's no shopping cart. Um, Does it seem better though, or just the same? It ebbs and flows. I mean, it was really bad until we passed the legislation. I mean, they were everywhere. I haven't seen them like I used to in right. the alleys, like tucked away. Well, oh, so at least we're getting paid for them now. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm just hoping that. You know, I think Kroger's is on board, and I think, you know, I appreciate, uh, we've had a couple administration come and talk with me, and the city manager, and we've tried to work out. Um, now, when individuals are taking shopping carts off the location, they're actually willing to file a report and prosecute those individuals. And our police department is willing to stop individuals. Um, we have a tracking system on the carts. I can't really tell the public because I don't want to get it get to get out to specific people that are taking carts. But um, that way we're aware that those are the shopping carts that belong to the Kroger in Nelsonville, not one in, in Hocking County or one in Athens. So we actually know if a police officer or if I stop someone that's pushing a cart, we know it's a Kroger cart from the Kroger in Nelsonville. So um, we've made some headway and it's been really nice working with them. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Becky. We are going to ordinance 67 20, on the second reading. An ordinance adopting Nelsonville City Code section 9.18.01, 9.18.99, 9 9.17.051, vacant property fees, penalties, and exemptions. Whereas the Nelsonville Planning Commission recommended on August 19, 2020, the adoption of Nelsonville City Code sections 9.18.01, 9.18.99, 9.17.051, vacant property fees, penalties, and exemptions. Now therefore be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that the Nelsonville City Code shall be amended effective January 1st, 2021, to adopt the following. Section 9.18.01, vacant property fees. The fees described in this section are established in order to defray the cost to the city government and community as a whole related to the health, safety, and economic impacts of structures which remain vacant for long periods of time, including but not limited to administrative costs for registering and processing the vacant building, owner registration form, and for the cost incurred by the city in monitoring the vacant building site. The fees are also structured in order to provide appropriate incentives for owners of vacant buildings to care for them properly, seek to fill them, and in appropriate cases, demolish them. The annually increased fee amounts are intended to absorb the cost incurred by the city for demolition and hazard abatement of or repair to vacant buildings, as well as the continued normal administrative costs stated above. A. The owner of a vacant building shall pay a fee of $100 with registration of a vacant property. For every consecutive year the building remains vacant, an annual fee will be assessed at double the previous year's fee for a maximum annual fee equaling the five-year fee of $1,600 to be used for the fifth and for all consecutive subsequent years of vacancy. B. The first annual fee shall be paid at the time the building is registered. If the owner successfully restores the building to occupancy or demolishes it in accordance with applicable city code during the year following registration, and there have been no violations associated with the property, the fee shall be refunded less than administrative charge equal to any cost the city <coughs> has incurred. C. All fees shall be paid in full prior to issuance of any zoning or demolition permits unless the property is granted an exception. And D, all fees including delinquent fees shall be paid by the owner prior to any transfer of an ownership interest in the vacant building. A lien may be placed on the property to collect delinquent fees. Section 9.18.99 penalties. Absent a showing of good cause, if a building is not registered within the time frame required in Section D, or the registration is not renewed within 30 days after the expiration of one year from the date of the previous registration, a penalty shall be paid in addition to the annual registration fee. The penalty, sh penalty shall be equal to one half of the current annual fee, or $800, whichever is less. Section 9.17.015, Exemptions. Abandoned residential property pending foreclosure. B, properties that are part of an estate undergoing probate, but not subject to bankruptcy, provided the administrator or executor of the estate resides in a contiguous county. C, rental properties actively being marketed for rental. D, a building which has suffered fire damage or damage caused by extreme weather conditions shall be exempt from the registration requirement for a period of 90 days after the date of the fire or extreme weather event if the property owner submits a request for exemption in writing to the code enforcement officer. This request shall include the names and addresses of the owner or owners and a statement of intent to repair or and reoccupy the building in an expedient manner or the intent to demolish the building. A, a building that is for sale provided that the owner submits proof that it is listed in the MLS to the code enforcement officer. 
F, a single family home or owner occupied two family dwelling has been used as a residence for at least 90 days in the last 270 days and the owner intends to resume living in the dwelling. G, a building under active construction, renovation or restoration where a building plan has been submitted to the code enforcement officer but no later than one year. H, any building that is owned by the land bank. I, any owner of a vacant building may request an exemption for other reasons, for example, actively marketing as a rental from the provisions of City Code Chapter 9.17 by filing a written application with the code enforcement officer. The applicant understands that the code officer shall consider the following. One, the applicant's prior record as it pertains to the city housing code, building code or property maintenance code violations. Two, the amount of vacant property the applicant currently has within the city. And three, the length of time that the building for which the exemption is sought has been vacant. Documentation required. <coughs> this ordinance shall be in full force and effect at the earliest moment permitted by law, duly enacted by council on second reading, the ninth, ninth day of November, 2020. Any council discussion on this? I do have a question. If somebody say you get left a property that is close to vacant or whatever, I'm reading, and this is for Gary, I'm reading this as if you put the property up for sale, you are therefore entitled to an exemption. You don't have, correct? How is this listed in the MLS? Provided it yep. in the MLS. Yep, you can't do the first line of operation. You just can't put a. Yeah, you have to list it. You don't have to hire, you cannot have to hire real estate. You just have to put it in the MLS. Would the person continue to pay a fee to be in the MLS? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, if it's a pain to you and you're you're trying to get out from under it, you can avoid the pain by putting it up for sale. Yeah, there is element someone off the fire. Yeah. That might help with some of the. Thank you. That's our goal. Okay. I think you've done a, a, a tremendous job of helping this ordinance from where it was. Motion to adopt. I'll second that. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ordinance 81-20, need someone to introduce it? I'll introduce it. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing a city manager to apply for, accept, and enter into, a, into an Ohio EPA water pollution control loan fund agreement on behalf of the city of Nelsonville for design of the regional collection system improvements phase three project and designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan. Whereas the city of Nelsonville seeks to design the regional collection system improvements phase three project. And whereas the city of Nelsonville intends to apply for an Ohio EPA water pollution control loan fund design loan to finance the design of the project. And whereas the Ohio EPA requirements of the government authority to pass legislation for application of a loan and the execution of an agreement as well as designing a dedicated repayment source. Now therefore be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, it is necessary to complete the Regional Collection System Improvements Phase 3 project for the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the City of Nelsonville. It is necessary to apply for a design loan from the Ohio EPA Water Pollution Control Loan Fund. The city manager of the city of Nelsonville be and is hereby authorized to request from the Ohio EPA Water Pollution Control Loan Fund the financing required to complete the design of the project. That the method of repayment monies loaned from the Ohio EPA Water Pollution Control Loan Fund shall be wastewater revenues generated from Nelsonville 
wastewater customers. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by Council on second reading the 23rd day of November 2020. Any discussion? All right. Any more we have? I do have a discussion on that ordinance. Do you, do you need it? Like Pronto or <clears throat> timing wise, yes. Uh, we had a call with EPA. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. need to get the reason. Uh, uh, oh, well, we had a call with EPA and they, they asked us, uh, they told us that it, to maximize our odds of getting a project funded, uh, to have it signed, submitted by June. And further, uh, most importantly, the aerial survey that we use for base mapping of the projects has to be completed after the leaves come off the trees and before the snow covers the ground. So we've got a short window of opportunity uh, here. Do we need to add an emergency clause, Karen? Yes. Um, Michael, you might also explain that how this is, the money is advanced through a, a design loan, I think, and then paid for out of the construction loan. That's, that's correct. Um, they give you the seed money through a design load, zero percent interest up front, just like uh, we've done with the phase uh, one and two project. And then once the project goes to construction, that uh, debt is retired by the construction fund manager. Motion to add an emergency to 8120. And there's one other point I want to make that you need to be aware of, and that is that this project is within the Athens County uh, sewer, 6117 sewer district. And I talked to Lenny Elias and the county does have to release it to Nelson Hill. We don't have that yet, but they will be doing that. Motion to add an emergency clause and suspension of the rules to 8120. Second. Okay. Oh. Ready? Ready. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Motion to suspend the rules? Yes. Second. Wait, wait, wait. She, she didn't hear it because I just I, she called my name and then. Oh. So I had to have a motion to put it, to put the clause on the ordinance in them. I thought she did it all together. Yeah. Well, don't we have to ask your give it a second. Get rid of the motion to add the emergency clause. Okay. No, I thought he was actually suspending here. Yeah. You have to we have to add the emergency in. first. And then, and then, yeah. yeah. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Did I do that right? I don't know. Yes. Great. Right. <laughs> okay, motion to That's adopt. Great. And Greg gives motion to adopt. And second. <laughs> Trying to let her catch up. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Okay. And here we go. So we are to ordinance 82 20. Can someone introduce it? I'll introduce it. Uh, and ordinance amending the 2020 appropriations ordinance as follows transfer seven thousand dollars from general fund line item 100-100-10011 over time to 100-100-10010 salary and wages <coughs> five thousand Four hundred and one dollars and thirty-six cents from general fund number one zero zero dash one zero zero dash one zero zero one one overtime to line item number one zero zero dash one zero zero dash four zero zero one zero operating supplies. Transfer four thousand five hundred dollars from line item number one zero zero dash one zero one dash one zero zero one zero. Overtime to line item number 100-100-40010, operating supplies. Transfer 
$98 from line item number 100-101-10011 over time to line item number 100-100-40010 operating supplies. Appropriate from the unappropriated amounts the following. $2,000 to line item number 100-370-30011 postage. $5,000 to line item number 100-370-10060 workers comp. $50,000 to water fund line item number 100-730-80080 water upgrade. $5,000 to line item number 700-370-10060, workers' comp. $2,000 to line item number 100-370-30011, postage. $5,000 to sewer line, sewer fund line item number 750-370-10060, workers' comp. $2,000 to line item number 750-370-30011 postage and $2,000 to line item number 100-100-80010 truck payment. Whereas the 2020 appropriations ordinance needs to be amended. Now therefore be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio that the 2020 appropriations you can, you can skip the item, please. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Oh. And so it shall be in full force and effect at the earliest date permitted by law, duly enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules, the ninth day of November 2020. Just a clerical there, $5,000. Oh, in the middle of it, in the middle of it, yeah. On, it's on both the top and the bottom. Uh, Which one? Uh, coming from the line item 100370 it's It's five comma zero zero dot zero zero. Just missing a zero. Text is five thousand. Yeah. It, it is five thousand. It's not fifty thousand. So that's no, the next no, one. That's the next one. Okay. One right all right. All right. All right. Yep. Yep. One right above it. We already did the. There's a lot of ones. Seven thousand dollars in the general fund. Over time. Don't do that last week. Mm -hmm. That was just at the finance meeting, but we haven't done it at council yet. That was the finance meeting. Oh, no. oh, okay. uh, motion to suspend. Which is which truck? The police. The chief's truck. Didn't you say a meeting or two ago? I thought that was paid off. No, I thought was looking for ways to pay for it with care money. Yeah. And uh, originally we were told no. However, we're still looking at a different way of going about it. And uh, we haven't got a final answer back yet. Okay. I thought it was only the done. first payment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If I could, if could I quickly just just, uh, just real quick the first section is just budget transfers you guys have seen uh inter intra departmental all police so no any no additional money is being spent here just move to line items that need it and from line items that don't need it um the postage money is because of water notices that you probably all received for ttsm as well as abatement notices going out within a week and the water project upgrades are mostly stand type bills. Mr. Betts over there in the corner who would like paid for the work they're beginning to do on the water upgrades. Most of that's OWDA money, but we of course have to spend it and they send us um, the truck payment we explained. We explained to the finance committee workers comp we get billed monthly for, um, which is more work. We pay them 12 times a year. Uh, they will give us a pretty good discount and lower our premiums to pay them once a year. So we were paying them more to do more work. So I thought it would be better to just pay this December, all of 2021, and Scott agreed, finance committee agreed, and we'll spend less on workers' comp. So I, I was told today that uh, there's going to be significant uh, refunds in the workers' comp. Mm -hmm. 
deal. Thank you, Taylor. Yep, just wanted to give a quick explanation. We have a motion to spend that. Taylor, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duncan? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. 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 Um, ordinance 83-20. Can someone introduce it? Authorize it. Second. An ordinance authorizing a $30 per month allowance for cell phones for police chief, fire chief, service director, water plant operator, wastewater treatment plant operator, and code officer. Whereas personal cell phones are used for city business by the police chief, fire chief, service director, water plant operator, wastewater treatment plant operator, and code officer. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that the following employees shall receive $30 per month allowance for personal cell phone usage for city business. Police chief, fire chief, service director, water plant operator, wastewater treatment plant operator, and code officer. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect of the early state permitted by law. Bill enacted by council on second reading the 23rd day of November 2020. Council discussion on that. Uh, you need another pass after the first business, after the first year out. Just thought okay. Wow. Wow. You're one of the same. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jerry, I think we already talked about this, but just to make sure, this isn't going to put the phones at risk at all, right, by the city council? Paying for the phones? Right. Well, paying so much a month for, for their personal use. I mean, using your personal phone well, for city business. the state auditor could, I suppose, demand that you be able to document that they're using it. I think if the bill is $90 a third of the time for city business. Well, I guess the bigger, so. The bigger thing is this is definitely going to make these public records. So. Yeah, that's what I meant right there. Yeah. But, yeah. no, I mean, if your phone, would, if you're doing city business on your phone anyway, it would be considered public record whether or not you're getting a $30 allowance for it or not. Uh, yes and no. Uh, probably what you're using it for specifically for city business might be, but then when you pay the, the full fee of it, everything on it is basically public record. So I just wonder if we should think about that. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I just, I'm afraid for... The other thing I thought about, the other thing I thought about is instead of naming people, just anybody the city manager requires to use their own cell phone should be. We've had times when the people driving the files were, you know, <clears throat> communicating back and forth with the, and anybody that the city manager requires to use their cell phone should be able to get it just like everybody else, and it should. I, I don't just like making the list. I just think that it should be the city. It should be up to discretion. Yeah. I think the reason these folks were listed, though, if I'm not. Uh, is there the head? Because they actually have cell phones we're paying for currently. Right. And and so that's why I think they were named here. Is that, is that accurate? Correct. So most folks have actually turned in the citywide phone. In fact, we found several city phones being paid for on a monthly basis just sitting in their stores dead. And uh, so I started terminating those because folks wanted to use their own phone instead of haul two phones around. And I believe we're down to two or three actual city phones left because everybody else wanted to use their personal phone. So we've just been turning them off and turning them off. And uh, one phone alone costs us uh, with payment and service about 60, 70 bucks a month, roughly. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and then, so the 30 would cover, you know, half the cost, half their cost of the phone for their personal one, and it would save the city overall money as well. Are they all aware, though, that their phone could be public record? Uh, I never believed that they didn't think it was already, but uh, we can certainly I'm pretty that, sure that we can do a reason sign for that. Yes, I also suspect this could be W two income form of the Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's oh, yeah. funny coming out. The uniform allowance is W-2. Yeah, yeah. So. Unless, unless you retain the under-tip for uniform and let them require they turn them back in, that's the uniform allowance is W-2. Okay. Hey, I have a question. question as an employee that's listed on that list. Uh, if you choose to opt out, you can opt out, correct? Because I don't see where it's, I, I didn't no, hear anywhere. It's not mandatory, no. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put my everything on my phone to public record. Well, I use my phone as city business, but I'm not gonna. Sub, I'm not gonna take thirty dollars. It's subject to the. It, it doesn't. I think Gary, it doesn't matter if you take the thirty dollars or not. If you use your phone for city business, it becomes public record. It becomes public record. No, that's not what I said. I, I said what it does matter. matter. Stuff on the city I'm, business is city business. Your personal stuff is not. Right. You start, right. You start it's, paying for it, then yeah, it's all going to be. All of it's going to be. So my yeah. personal stuff will too. So that's crazy. I wouldn't. There you go. All right. Anything else? Maybe we should add that employees do have the right to opt out. Doesn't say it's not any employee can refuse any benefits so they don't want it. Okay. So that would protect them against what they're old. Everything was okay. Okay. That's for that's it for that's just the first rate. Right. Four dash twenty. Can someone introduce it? I'll introduce it. Right. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with Santec for engineering services for a sewer plant project phase three and declaring emergency. Whereas it is necessary to hire Santec engineering to design the sewer project phase three. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that the city manager is authorized to execute the contract with Santec. Dantec Engineering Incorporated for the engineering costs in accordance with Exhibit A attached here to and incorporated here and by reference. This ordinance shall is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary to timely allow the sign of the sewer plant to meet funding deadlines and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. The only enacted by council on the first reading on the key section of the rules the ninth day of November 2020. Any council discussion on this? Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Um, yes. Yes. Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Okay. Ordinance 85-20 and then someone introduce it. Ordinance. Right. Can I ask? Gary Hunter, a quick question. Gary, should should this specify where it's being paid from if those funds don't exist yet? Or it's just well, that's the reason I didn't put it in there since the funds don't exist yet. So nobody, nobody told me what's being paid for. Well, just because 2020 capital improvement funds and, we, and that you guys haven't appropriated that yet. So I didn't know if that was a confusing section for that ordinance. I don't work, I'm not following where you are. You know, but it just says. It just counts. It says, well, it says in section one will be paid out of 2021 funds, but we haven't appropriated 2021 funds, so I don't understand. Mine doesn't say that. Where? 8520. 8520. 8520. 8520. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was losing my mind over here. <laughs> yeah, I probably am. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> um, I just didn't. I, I just didn't know if the ordinance should just authorize the purchase without the funds because we haven't finished them. I was told the finance committee said this was to be paid out of 2021 fire department capital improvement fund. 2021. Yeah. Which is what I could not been aware of. Yeah, I guess we don't understand your So question. can we commit funds we haven't appropriated yet? I guess is what I'm asking. Can, can we're we not say, committing funds 
uh, the whereas is not are not the the text of the ordinance. The only thing it means le legally is what follows after now therefore be it ordained language. The whereas is are nothing more than comments that are made. Right. In section one after section one is authorizing a purchase and once council authorizes the purchase then well it says we paid out twenty one capital improvement plan. I mean, right, council is going to have to appropriate capital improvement plan. Well, we haven't done appropriation yet. That's what I'm confused about. I mean, see, and we can't go. So, I mean, I don't see the problem. The bill's not going to come to right. next year. Yeah. Next year. The other thing is, we're saying that we're that part of it that's going to we're be allowing him to order. Order. we're allowing him to order it, and then we can do the. Well, yeah, I understand he needs to order it now. I'm not going to let him order it unless there's some sort of commitment somewhere along the line the council's going to pay right. for it. Right. This is bad. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back in yeah, yeah, I guess what they're saying is that Dan already answered this. Oh, that's right. That's going to be in the budget for 2021. It's going to stay there. Like an hour ago. I just hadn't seen an authorization to purchase word in that way. I didn't know words. If you don't start reading, I know. Just, just, yeah, <laughs> just start reading. Come on, please. And we're we'll authorizing the purchase to Mark Pagers for the fire department to be paid out of 2021 capital improvement fire department funds and declaring an emergency. Whereas, if Mark Pagers are ordered now for the fire department, they will not be employed until January 2021. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio. That the fire chief is hereby authorized to purchase Mark Pagers in accordance with Exhibit A, attached here to and incorporated here and by reference, and said Mark Mark Pagers will be paid out of 2021 capital improvement fire department funds. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30, because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary because the Mark Pagers need to be ordered immediately to secure their arrival by January 2021, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. It will be enacted by council on first reading and suspension of the rules on the 9th day of November 2020. Okay, any uh, council discussion on this? this how much was it today? I didn't know. Didn't Hearing what, what are we talking about? Twelve thousand two hundred ninety-three dollars. How many cents? Come on, Corey. Come on, Corey. Pretty good. <laughs> Great. Didn't you have a finance degree? And that compared to buying actual Mark's radios, what would that be? Oh, that's a lot of uh, You're talking six hundred and sixty dollars. There might be a, uh, more of a discount now, closer to the end of the year for the Mark's figures. You're looking anywhere from two to five thousand dollars for a March radio. Push this suspend. I'll second that. Um, Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Motion to adopt. Move. I can't. Did you just wake up over there? I'm not, I'm just, I just wanted people to know I was here. Okay. He just, <laughs> just, he just, he just wanted to Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. I'm in the score book now. Maybe into the game. Bad as bad. First time for everything. All right. All right. Ordinance 86 20. Can someone introduce it? An ordinance creating the position of in house tier one IT specialist and declaring an emergency. Whereas it is more efficient and cost effective to have an in house tier one IT specialist. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio that the position of in-house tier one IT specialist is hereby created in accordance with the job description attached here to and incorporated herein by reference. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure 
pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30, that the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary because the city has pressing IT issues that can be handled more efficiently and in a more cost-effective manner by an in-house Tier 1 IT specialist, and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by Council, the first reading under suspension of the rules, the ninth day of November 2020. All right. Um, any Council discussion on this? I, I don't see a job description attached, so I'm just wondering, like, can we... It was attached to the email. Yeah, I cut it out. It didn't come from me. It came from Gary. From Gary originally. Oh. Yeah, it was it was a the original email. All right. Oh, there we go. Give me one second. I did the uh, Jeopardy theme song there, and then I forgot the Alex Trebek died. Alex Trebek died. Passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay. She was much smarter than me. What? Mm -hmm. So, discussion? Uh, just to, to make it clear, there will be uh, tracks and uh, history and recorded actions. Anything that's done, there will be a history of uh, per, of the work order and stuff like that. Absolutely. So, our new, uh, our current tracking system is iWorks. Yeah. And you can do recorders from everything in there, from potholes to you name it, and we will run the IT. Um, same way. Work orders, same way through, work orders through there. That way there's a record out there. Um, the, the IT person should not do any work until the ticket's in. And then once the ticket's in, then whatever work is conducted, a brief description of what was conducted was put in there. And we will have a log. The, uh, the only thing that I would ask, just, just because of everything that we've been through, I would ask, I would like, I would think that everybody would agree, I think, that you would be the one putting in the work order, only you putting in the work orders for IT stuff. I would only, or you. at least approving it, or approving it. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't want to be a single point of failure if a department head. I get that. Needs, I get that. Uh, but I want you to be aware of what's going on. Yes, sir. I want you to be a part of the failure, though. Right. No. <laughs> we win as a team, and we lose as a team, and we run as a team. Right. Oh. Okay. I just don't think that I think the city manager can point at any employee we got and say, you go do this, and if it's not right. a case, you can sit there and right. the employee has to do it, so I'm not for making a position, so I'm going to put that on. Okay. All right. Motion to suspend. Second. Second.
the same. They look exactly the, the same. The phase three, they, I, I pointed out the phase three was really the imperial uh, stone drill process for people in the order. Yeah. I feel like this is the same. You may have walked out on this one. Yeah. It's a duplicate. Yeah. 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 Duplicate. duplicate. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to make that's that it. E7. So, uh, that's a good question, Dan. So, Mr. Hunter, do we need to change uh, the last ordinance number to 8720 then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. You mean 8120, we need to change to 8720? Yeah. No, no, So if Becky issued it, they'd have to come to my office to come back after they dispose of Becky, and then they'd have to go to Rex. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't think adding permit and inspection fee, though, determines where it's going. So I don't think we need to worry about that. Well, we have a forestry reason. You can put permit, establish permit, and inspect. If forestry reads it, then we don't have a problem. There you go. Right, but after the word established. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the $25 fee then? So the permit and. Permit? Yep. Permit. And and inspection fee? Yeah. Oh. Before she reads it, that takes care of it. And then. And the consumer inspection fee. Oh. How much is the permit fee? $25. We just went with all the other permits. Don't you go with it? You had to add, add number three on underneath section one that says no permit fee of $25. Well, it's already added in the price. Oh, is it? It is? Yes, yeah, so the inspection is $100 and the fee, the $25 is the permit fee. Yeah. And then the one with the pump, it's $250 for the inspection fee and then $25 for the permit. Do those need to be paid separately for accounting purposes or can they pay them? They can, um, not necessarily, no. They can just write a check when they will come in. They pay us, and then we pay Rex for the inspection. Yeah, so my question, though, is should it be, should we break it out? So it's permit fee $25, gravity and sewer inspection $100. And they got to make better sound. I don't think you need to, though, um, because it's kind of like paying your water and sewer. You pay it all at once, and we separate, you know. So it wouldn't necessarily have to, I think. If we're adding this word permit, all you got to do is add gravity, sewer, permit, and why, why inspection. Just, that that's clear, clear. They're all clerical, what you're talking about. Let's bring yeah. it up. We just add the permit. Okay. Need to read it the way it is then, except for adding change, permit add and permit. Permit. in the body. Should I yeah. Well, I'd suggest you just put it in parentheses after the 125 or 275 permit, you know, 25. Twenty-five permit included. No. After one no, and two. No, when you put the one twenty-five, just put in parentheses. Permit twenty-five dollars, inspection one hundred dollars, and whatever it is on the side. Oh, okay. Two fifteen, twenty-five. Two fifteen and twenty-five. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Did anybody introduce him? Did anybody hear no. me? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Are you ready? Yeah. An ordinance establishing a permit and inspection fee for gravity sewer and grinder pump inspections and declaring an emergency. Whereas it is necessary to establish a permit and inspection fee for gravity sewer and grinder pump inspections. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio. That the following fees are established for permit and inspection. Gravity sewer inspection, 
permit fee 25 inch uh, inspection fee 100. Grinder pump inspection 25, $275, that's $25 permit fee, $250 for the inspection. This ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary. Citizens are desirous of connecting the city sewer system and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. The only enacted by council on first reading under suspension of the rules the ninth day of November 2020. Any council discussion? Motion to suspend. <laughs> Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Joe? Yes. Motion to adopt. Thank you. How are you? We gotta get on the same page. I'm, I'm like your daughter. Yes. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Duffy. Yes. Ms. Grant. Yes. Mr. Booth. Yes. Mr. Grant. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. And that is the end of the ordinances, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're to the City Manager's report. Scott. Great. Good evening, everyone. So the first thing is asphalt is supposed to be going down tomorrow on Chestnut Street. Uh, as a reminder to everyone, it is not the final product that we want to have the final product till spring. The plan is to make that a one-way street through there, so you'd be able to enter from the uh, Athens to exit side one way down to uh, Borough Boulevard. We will be coning off different areas because there's going to be elevated manholes out there because we're not doing the full thickness of asphalt at this time. And uh, any settling, everybody's uh, situational awareness, we're doing that just in case there's any settling, uh, something breaks, and we have to dig it up and get to it. That way we're not cutting into brand new asphalt. And we'll get a much better product, product by waiting till then. Uh, anywho. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what are you making in one way? Chestnut Street that comes in that's all tore up right now just for the winter oh. until it's not a permanent change it's just for uh, us until it's finished because if we have it multi-directional the existing manholes will be three to four inches above grade which will tear up cars and it'll also tear up the manholes themselves so we will be have protective uh, barriers out there around those areas they'll be well marked uh, just to make sure nobody hits them but it's too risky making it two way and trying to funnel people around those obstacles and not crash into each other. So that's happening tomorrow. <clears throat> Providing everything goes well. Then um, we got our in our final quotes for the uh, hot box machine that I mentioned to you guys at, at the finance meeting. Um, we because we didn't use all the paving money this year, we're purchasing a trailer that will. Uh, maintain the heat of the asphalt. You can actually keep it overnight and for an extended period of time so it doesn't waste it. Also gives our folks an opportunity to have more time at the hole itself. Uh, problem that we were having was the asphalt would get cold and crumble and we were wasting a lot of material. So this will definitely be an efficiency for the team. It has some other Gucci uh, bells and whistles on it. For example, a rack to hold the plate compactor so the folks can uh, We'll now have a lot better equipment to repair holes correctly. Next nice. Year. So, and then uh, the water department's been crushing it with several uh, water leaks. We had three today, got one tomorrow already, plus a few of them over the weekend. Uh, that's why our book goal neighbors were with low pressure, had a two inch hole and an eight inch line over there, shooting about two feet out of the ground this first thing this morning. So the crew over there continues to push forward. Uh, the police department keeps doing what the police department does. They keep getting uh, folks with warrants. They take them to jail and the jail refuses to take them. It's a continuing process. Uh, they do, they're, they're doing a fantastic job. I don't know if you folks have watched their daily report, but 
their production is way up and they're doing a great job. The dog should be back in about two weeks, provided everything checks out okay. And then Attila and also Jones are doing, out doing what they do. Don't really have anything else. Any, any questions you have, that concludes my brief. Have you attempted to do a left hand turn? Did you say you're going to run it one way towards Chestnut Street? Toward Burroughs Boulevard. Yeah, to, toward, you're going to run. You're going to run west instead of east, one way. Correct. Have you attempted to make a left-hand turn, go down Canal Street, then make a left-hand turn back up there? Because that's what residents that live there will have to do. They'll have to go down to by the old certified station and make our bills mother, then make a left-hand turn. And with that all tore up, that might be hard to do. Or they'll come from Hoffman. Right. I mean, there shouldn't. I can't imagine there being anything tore up. Uh, that there's only, nothing tore up right in front of Bill Mont Bill Montfort. Yeah, it's quite. It's pretty rough right there. They, they got the right hand side tore up, and there's part of the left hand side that's tore up. Try it. Just I mean, just, I guess uh, I've made that turn multiple times going down there, doing site surveys, and I haven't had a problem. I, was, I just yeah, hadn't done it, so sure. I was just. You know, I figured if you did your pickup truck, it'd be fine. But yeah, it, it makes the turn. Um, so to answer your question more directly, yes, uh, I've made that turn multiple times in different vehicles. And even Jason's city truck that has a turning radius of a school bus makes it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you, Scott. Uh, all right, we're to the, uh, the good of the order and start off. Justin. Mr. Booth. Thank you, Mr. Dunphy. Uh, first, I'd like to, uh, as a uh, proud translator of Nelsonville and uh, alumnus of Port Fire High School, uh, congratulate the cadets on their big win uh, last weekend. Uh, Mr. Dunphy's son plays, and that's, uh, that's a big step. We got 47 to 7. That's a heck of a, heck of a ball game. Payback for Nelsonville. Good for them. Um, I uh, wanted to let everybody know uh, the National Honor Society at the high school is doing a canned food drive this week. Uh, so we're trying to collect all the uh, non perishable food they can at the school, and they'll be doing a coat drive also. Uh, my daughter made sure to uh, make sure I mentioned that this evening. So, And then uh, Wednesday is Veterans Day, so uh, hopefully everyone uh, takes time to thank a veteran for what they've done for us, including our city manager and other folks here in the room. So, much of my appreciation. And, uh, uh, I just want to thank everyone who voted. Uh, the street levy passed, yeah. which was good news for the city. So, um, yeah, thanks. Mr. Smith. Good. He's good. He's good. You okay? No, my shoulder hurts. But okay. okay. <laughs> All right. There it is. All right. There's something wrong. Mr. S Mr. Taylor. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. All my loved ones. Wow. Happy Valentine's Day. Wow. Happy Valentine's Day. Wow. 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 I love that. I was thinking, I was thinking of my buddy Scott. Wow. 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 Say happy Veterans Day. Thank you. Um, to all the veterans out there um, that are serving and uh, have served, many of my family have served, and, and I appreciate it and it's really grateful. And uh, and it is an important day for us to remember. And and uh, so I just I just want to say thank you. Happy Veterans Day, Mr. Sherman. So yeah, uh, I to expand on Elizabeth's thing. Yes, thank everybody that voted for the street levy. Uh, also, I had actually been out running the streets about three in the morning. And I got to tell you, the police department is doing a heck of a job because. Stalker. No, they're not stalking. I should watch where you go. Yeah, they're keeping an eye on my building. But uh, I've only seen maybe two people out versus what we probably saw four or five, five months ago. So, police department's doing an excellent job. And with that being said, I'm going to try to put together a uh, neighborhood watch meeting on December 2nd. So, that'll be the first Wednesday of the month. So, we'll uh, be in touch on how we're going to get that done. That's all I got. 
Do you have a time? No, so we'll announce the time and, and, and confirm that. Okay. I am just very, I just want to say thank you to all the city employees. Um, you know, it's kind of different to be able to go into Kroger and not have 15 people complaining about 15 different things. And uh, I really feel for once in this long time that I've been here um, that the city is making the turn for the better and it's all about its employees. It's just that everyone's doing it. So I just want to thank them all. That's all. And we have a motion. Carla, oh, I'm sorry, Carla. Oh, Why did I forget her? Because they already said what I was going to oh, say. They did it to us. Yeah. Right? Thunder Yep. Uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for voting for the street levy also. All right. We have, I said happy on the nice day. I want to say happy birthday to Mr. Barber. <laughs> Again. 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 Thank you, Gord. All right. Shall we say? No. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, the last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the uh, executive, we have a motion to go into the executive session, ORC 121.22G4, pending or threatening litigation and labor negotiations. Including. And we're bringing in um, Mr. Betts and Scott and Mr. Hunter for the first part, and Scott and Mr. Hunter for the labor negotiations. Um, we need to temper that one piece. The first piece? Which piece? Which one is that? Pending litigation. Yeah. Just tell me when you want me to walk back. Okay. All right. And, <laughs> okay, we'll invite in table. Let's do that first. Uh, yeah. Okay. Motion first. So moved. Second. 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 Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Brown? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. That's always what's Motion to come out of executive order. Oh, wait, let me take notes. Come out of the executive session, not executive order. Wait, sorry, did you motion that? I did. I seconded it. Okay. Did we read it? Carl. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion to appoint uh, Ms. Jones as temporary clerk. For Second. Second. <laughs> Retroactive to the beginning of the day. <laughs> Mr. Sherman? Yes. Ms. Dumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Jones? Yes. <coughs> Motion to adjourn, Mr. Taylor. Oh, yes. Mr. Taylor, I'm so oh, sorry. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Do we need to do anything about Greg leaving? No. Uh, okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. This is harder than you think. Mr. Dunphy. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Grant. Yes. Mr. Booth. Yes. Ms. Jones. Uh, Ms. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. All right. Tony, you're by the first round. Yeah. <laughs>